These suits, which was first noticed in October 2016, deposit on cars, rooftops, plants, and floors. Some residents of Portacot who are blaming the suits on illegal bunkering activities say they now find it difficult to breathe. We, let me breathe to put fire. We, church, we, what, you put your airports out. Government, you help us out. Uh, that you help us out. We are dying. Sometimes you see me panking, breathing high. So these are the experience we have. My house, white cloth, no, they get them. Don't die, finish. Uh, this is not going to breathe person. Ah, whether I need to make another risk, breathe well. Ah, no, no, whether I need to take government to. Make the help us, whether I then go do stop them. This car was just packed yesterday, washed yesterday, packed. This just the next morning, you can see my hands. So I rub my hand, look at the charcoal, look at the black suits. My ticket now, they, they cough, they cough, they cough. And when he, he sneeze for the kata, you will see black, black things inside. In the meantime, the River State Government, in a statement released Wednesday in Port Accord, said it has set up a tax force to tackle the black suit. But the chairman of Nigerian Medical Association, NMA in River State, Dr. Datoye Alassia, has a piece of advice for residents while awaiting the outcome of the state government's investigation. You may try to restrict access by shutting the windows where they are not necessary. People may have to go as far as the use of, of, uh, of, of barriers, face masks, if to help prevent inhalation, especially for those who are very vulnerable. So, how soon are Portacot residents expecting to hear from the tax force set up by the River State Government? A member of the team and an associate prof in climate and air quality at the River State University of Science and Technology, Precious Eden, spoke to STV News. It is premature for us to begin to say that it is from a, a given source. As for uh, how long it will take to get a result, uh, I, I can't go into details of what is required. Uh, for instance, we need to profile the atmosphere over Port Harcourt, and that takes a lot of energy and time to take several weeks to be able to achieve it. For now, residents of Port Harcourt have no choice but to continue inhaling this until the River State Ministry of Environment and the Nigerian Environmental Society come up with an answer to what is responsible for this suit. From Port Harcourt, Monica Ogwa, STV News. Beautiful one there from Monica. I mean, now we know what is responsible for the suit. It is what to do to stop what is responsible for the suit. Yeah, so that's what, what the geoscientists were saying, which is, which is what a lot of people have been saying. There's no clear science now to say is the profile is responsible. But they have a number of factors they're thinking. So they think that the profile has played a role. They also think the burning of tires is also playing a role in it too. They also think uh, what is going on with some other oil activities and uh, gas flaring, heavily, heavily polluted uh, uh, potaco, like uh, you know the congestion on the roads which you have regularly, also because of the vehicles you have there. All of that contributing to what is happening there. If you ever thought thought about black gold, which is what crude oil is usually called, and the curse of the black gold, here's a perfect example of what is happening in potaco and the wrong way which things are being done in an unsustainable way, which is defined as development, which is meeting today's demands without compromising future, today's needs without compromising future uh, demands. But one thing has got me thinking, uh, this is um, the fact that you have um, um, oil resource, which is resource control communities now, for example, natural resource communities, which, who don't have responsibility over what is happening in their communities. Unfortunately, we've seen this play out over and over again. Uh, former President Goodluck Jonathan tried to do something, I remember then, by asking people to protect the oil pipelines and pay them money for it. It was very controversial at that point in time, but it did help to some extent, maybe, on, maybe in the immediate, to prevent people breaking the pipelines and stealing fuel. This discussion we're having today coincides with, with something that happened yesterday where they were talking about the, the, the volume of stolen oil yeah. in this country. It's on the increase because the poor fire, which is being burnt, uh, <laughs> and then the petrol or kerosene comes from, is stolen crude. So how are they going to stop 
first and foremost, the profile, if they don't have a handle over the oil which is being stolen. Because if you stop the supply, then to a large extent you have. But to fold their hands and then keep going after the profile without dealing with where the source is coming, then uh, you perhaps are just scratching the surface. They're perpetually dancing around in circles. So they have to first and foremost 360 this problem, look at where the source is. If you can deal with that, I, I think some of what we're seeing, you know, there was a viral video where uh, they're trying to find out where, uh, where, 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 the, the where the tax force busted some mm. uh, security operatives yeah. who were directly involved in the theft of oil. So put a handle on that one and then you've dealt to an extent with, uh, with the profile happening. I totally agree with you that the issues are, are pretty, pretty deep. Um, it's a case of it's a case of, um, I beg your pardon, I've been spoken to from, from the back end, but it's a case, it's a case, of, um, it's a case of finding out the cause and effect here. You know, it's a case of this guy doesn't have a job and in order for him to feed his family and not suffer hunger, he's brought by this particular person to say, okay, come do this school fire thingy, sharp money, quick money, you get it, you do it today, you get this amount of thousands of naira. You say, wow, this is good money, oh, that's fine. You go again, you do it tomorrow, you do it, you do it next tomorrow. It's a cartel. And the thing is, you keep catching, or you keep arresting the foot soldiers, but the person in charge, the owners of this farm, which is deep in the bush, are, are, are still free, moving around. They will get more foot soldiers to do the job. And it is so contradictory that we have security agencies, security agencies actually nipping um, um, these activities in the board, burning the, uh, the, the villages or burning the particular area where this so-called uh, illegal refineries are situated. And on the other hand, we also have the same security, you know, but a different set, the same security agency protecting this same people. So it's more like we have to find out who are the bad eggs within the security agencies that are carrying out this as because there is no way those guys will continue to do their work without getting protection from the security agencies who as well give them information. Oh, they say they're coming here on Tuesday, everybody pack a load and leave. Because most of the sites that were visited by um, Governor Nyo Wiki and the team, they were empty. They got there. There was nobody there. About four or five of them. Nobody was there. How did they get information that the governor was going to visit other people? Somebody within the security agency, definitely, this is not a matter of conspiracy theory. This is what at least has been seen, you know, in the media. It's, it's a really deep issue. Right. And there is this case also of, um, there's this case also of, uh, why do we're speaking, the case of the guys dropping the bulls, dropping the poor fire thingy and picking up arms. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's choosing between the devil or choosing between the Red Sea and the Pharaoh. Yeah, unfortunately. So let's. So what we're going to do, interestingly, a large chunk of our audience um, are in River State. So they see firsthand what is happening to them on a daily basis. We're going to open the phone lines and sort of uh, get your get your um, reactions to what is happening in Port Harcourt. Um, we've talked about the quality of air there is unhealthy. It's 19 times higher than the World Health Organization set standards. And it's because of the on, um, on, on illegal environmental practices going on that is causing this to happen. And there are consequences. You just need to look at Ogoni uh, to see how it has become a dead community. I mean, you have some of the worst environmental and health conditions you can imagine uh, happening to the people. And this the consequences of living with crude oil. And when you think about the future, unfortunately, the Petroleum Industry Act had provided us an opportunity to look at the environmental consideration. But the president has asked for an extension because of some other things he wants uh, in place before that happens, which unfortunately is disastrous for oil communities. We're going to um, open the phone line. So I said at the bottom of the screen, you can see the numbers. We'd love to hear from you, especially from those in uh, Port Accord. But if you're not in Port Accord, you could also still join the, con the conversation. But we would love to hear more from people in River State to tell us what actions they are taking personally and what they expect uh, from the state actors to make this situation go away as quickly as possible. As Monica Ogwe pointed out, this has been on since 2016. And um, indeed, the, the wheel does move very slowly in making things happen. We know at the background it's getting worse because um, one thing that happens with the environment, if it's not remediated as quickly as possible, the problems yep. add up. 
and the adding on add on effects of those problems uh, pro provide for us a worse atmosphere, which you know, if you've complained about health con health uh, health considerations, and worse still also to the degradation of the environment. And biodiversity concerns means that what you are benefiting from the environment today, you may not have it. One problem, two is that in the future the benefits will be lost to our children and their children, which is why we need to not only provide for our children today, we need to think about them in the future and ensuring that the environment which we are keeping for them is an environment where we can say is sustainable and is healthy to, supply, to support human, animal and plant life. Absolutely. The cycle of healthy individuals um, is being threatened right now. Uh, instead of people to enjoy the benefit of um, do I call it industrialization or benefits of modern, the modern life, you know? We have been just, just suffering from the blessing, you know? It's more, like, it's more like when a blessing becomes a curse just because you cannot manage the resources um, effectively. But let's speak with one of our callers, Charles, calling from River State. So, so glad to have you call into the show. What's going on in the community? Do you still find the black suit and what can you, uh, the suit, I beg your pardon, and what can you tell us about um, the illegal, okay. you know, refineries going on? Talk to us, Charles. Hello? Good morning. Okay. Yeah, good morning. Concerning this uh, black suit, um, I think uh, the problem started from the government when uh, during the time they took some of the uh, river state uh, use for, for this, uh, uh, to learn uh, some oil activities in abroad. To learn oil activities and then they went there. When they came back, the government was unable to employ the guys, and then they started. So most of them went back to carry arms. After carrying arms, and then the government stopped them from doing that. They went back to this uh, uh, refinery to refine this uh, local uh, local refinery. Then, on doing that now, the government has, is also back to stop them. What the, the case is? If they stop them, what is the, 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 the position as what is the fate of the indigenous of these uh, villages and in Portaco? Because they will also go back to carry arms. So I, my own suggestion, I am suggesting if they are stopping them, let them provide jobs. Let that be, even if it, it will be a modular refinery or whatever, there should, should be jobs. Because what, anything that makes them to stop this uh, illegal refinery, that means they should be ready for security, oh, as a serious security, because they will also go back to carry arms. That's all. And the arms and the oil, which one will be better for us? Because people will be dying. Although we know that this oil is, is a kind of mass problem. It's a mass problem that will affect so many people. But what about these arms? Because they will surely go back to arms. That's all. Go. So, Thank you so much, Charles. Well, that's another angle, and that's yeah. a concern from Charles there. Right, right, absolutely. Um, keep those calls coming in, and it's, it's, a, it's a big concern. It's not just with the Niger Delta, it's with communities that have resources. There's this yeah. sense of entitlement that because uh, a resource comes from my uh, neighborhood, we should benefit from it. So they shouldn't they benefit it. from it in the first place? Yes, they, they, should, should, benefit they, should, they should benefit from it, but it's a two-way um, two street. You benefit from it too, but you also have to um, earn the benefit, which means you must have ownership of it. So if you have ownership of it, you, you're, not, you're not actually benefiting from it. You're saying that I'm being paid, yes, to have this resource here, but because I have this resource here, I'm going to make sure that it's protected. So it's a two-way street. So the protection also means that you're, you know, but unfortunately, people are not protecting the resource, which is our problem here. But let's, go, let's get back to River State. We have Julian. Uh, Julian, please go ahead. Uh, let's see what you have to say. Okay, good morning. Morning. Good morning. My name is Julia from Port Harcourt. I, I really... Uh, hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. I really agree with the last caller. In a small child, we are very, very grateful. And the suit is is a serious issue. I have children, and almost every day they are falling sick because of the suit. You wash your clothes. In fact, I, I actually remember uh, one occasion 
we washed uh, uh, white clothes. We washed that white clothes like four times wow. before you have to put it back inside the house. Because before, after washing it, before bringing it inside, the thing will get dirty. You have to rewash it again. Then, then the children, the children are feeling sick. The suit is actually disturbing them more than coronavirus. The issue we have in River State about suit is worse than coronavirus. That is the gospel truth. Then another thing again, uh, the, the boys that they are after, they should try and give them something to do. Let's hmm. not deceive ourselves. When you tell these boys, don't do anything, don't uh, uh, don't uh, uh, do for fire, create jobs for them. Hmm. They want to work. They are not lazy. They want to work. I'm begging the government. You know, I remember what uh, one politician said one time. And when you decide not to train the children of the poor people, get ready, you that is rich. Mm. You understand? They should try and give them something to do. All right, Julia. Julia. Crazy. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Before you go, um, how, how efficient do you think the task force set up by Governor Newsom Wiki has been in nipping this illegal refinery in, in the board? Okay, okay, they are, they are doing well for now. And I really advise them not to stop. Because, you know, as our things they did, this uh, period, because everybody is like, okay, they are doing well, they are doing well. After a while, they will just see, 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 you understand? They should continue. They should not stop. They should continue. Mm. This a uh, few days, at least, uh, is a bit better. You understand? But if they stop, they will continue again. Right. It's crazy. Like, we sleep with mosquito nets. The mosquito net, you may, you may wash it today, today, before the next two days, it starts on to black. All right. It's crazy. Like, oh. it's that bad. All right, all right, Julia. Th thank you very much. Um, I understand we have a caller from River State who uh, does not want to disclose his identity, but will allow you to go ahead uh, as, as long as you keep to the rules um, of the game. Go ahead, please. situation that is now um, on the front of burners and the topical discourse is somehow laughable because this has a root cause. And the root is that our leaders or stakeholders neglected their responsibilities when this is started. What caused this? First, just like what the colleague has said, is lack of adequate productive industries to engage our youth that are growing. There is no, no, no practical plan or, 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 or implementation for our future with our youth. Children are, 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 are being brought into the world, they grow up, what will they become? Nations take charge of their future. That means that you must have productivity to engage this, and if you don't engage them productivity, they will go into destruction. That's what you're saying. Secondly, this region is known for um, uh, is known for oil, the crude oil activities, and over and over again, the issues have been there: uh, burden of pipelines, unemployment, uh, whatever, whatever. The vice president came and promised um, uh, what they call it, the the the, the, the modern refineries. What are they doing? They've gone back to sleep. This guy will do something. So they are, they are the cause. A leader who that knows that, look, this is an issue. What does it cause? It is, more, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is deadlier and more costly not to provide those additional, uh, those, uh, what they call it, uh, modern refineries and allow them to go there. They can so spend and do those things. You will engage this point in the, in the value chain of the oil distribution and production distribution. Okay? And they are sitting behind there in Abuja and every day they are overlooking this issue. They don't know what this is. This we can't stop them. So as long as they believe that their promises are in the pipeline, they'll keep up the pipeline. Thank you so much. It takes a leader that knows what to do. The leader that will call all his um, uh, relevant authorities together and say, look, Thank this is you. what we want to achieve, this is the benefit, and this is, so this is what we want to do. Thank you so much for your contribution. Thank you for that insightful comment there. We have another caller from University. Thank you so much for calling us from that region. We have John. Good morning, John. What's going Hello. on? Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, John, coming from Potato. All right, that's fine, John. Tell us, what's your experience like? Yes, uh, in respect 
aspect of this both fire storm thing, what we are talking about now is the health of the people. Mm. We are not talking, if there is no life, we cannot take regime and all these comments we are making. So what we will tackle first is to handle this thing to stop. After that, they enter another stage by creating jobs for the people. Because if we are not alive, we cannot work. If I may ask, how many persons are benefiting from this fire something that is now a problem to the whole country? So what we are talking here is the health of the people. I hear some people making comments that kerosene will be scarce. They are going back to carry arms. If you don't get good health, can you carry arms? Mm -hmm. So what we are saying is that this is the responsibility of everybody, of everybody. even the people that are doing the business profile. They are involved. So Absolutely. it is time for all of us Absolutely. to come together right. and find a way to solve this suit, the suit first. All right, thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, we, we've got another call from River State. Um, John, if I, if I heard correctly. Uh, please go ahead. If you're there, you can go ahead. All right, uh, it appears that. Um, All right, it appears we have um, some connection. Well, well Colonel uh, Chinedo Owoda joins the conversation now. He's uh, a security expert and um, is one time a commandant of uh, the Barak Ojo Cantonment. And he, he joins the conversation. And um, retired Colonel Owoda, great to have you join us this morning. Thank you for having me. Brilliant. I'm sure the had a hectic time just trying to get to the studio, but we did grateful that you could make it eventually. Uh, but tell, tell us something. I'm sure you've also been listening to the comments, and these are comments you do here every day uh, on the streets of Port Harcourt with respect to the suit and uh, the uh, task force which the state government has put in place to see how it can put an end uh, to these contraptions all across uh, the state, which they think is linked to the suit. What's your reaction with what they've done so far? You think that this is working or it's just a scratch on the surface? Well, um, the River State government has really tried to curtail the suit problem. The issue, the main issue on ground this young end into artisanal refinery, that is illegal refineries, bunkering. It's because of lack of job. And I've always said it that the issue, how the United States government can end this issue once and for all, is to build artisanal, uh, the, the, this uh, uh, modular refinery to enable the youth to be employed. The youth are not employed, and that is the bane of the problem. That's the most important issue. It is not the question of building uh, 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 skyscrapers, uh, uh, building uh, flyovers, and so on. The building they have, the, the government has already earmarked 10, uh, 10 uh, uh, flyovers for the state in Obiabo and the Potako uh, local government. But what we are saying is, let the government, it can, it's, not a, it's not a skyrocket project. It can be more than 15 billion. Let them open up two, three uh, refineries, modular refineries in either uh, Calabar region, Ahoda region, and Ogoni region to the youths. So when you don't do this, we are concentrating only on building flyovers and so on. It doesn't make sense. There's no human uh, capacity building that they have brought out. And that's what we are saying, that look, the best they can do is to 
build these re refineries to get employment for youth. The few uh, issues that the state government has said that they are trying to uh, organize the youth to do this vigilante group, it has not worked. It has not worked in any way. So when you talk of pens pensioners being paid their pension after 35 years of meritorious service to the state and to the nation, you make sure that they don't even have their their wages gratuity not paid, pension not paid for over six years. This is not fair enough. It is not fair. What we are saying, employ the youth. In the next few days, very cold over on the streets, because during this year, we'll find this in, I have seen that they are, we are engaged in all this both fire, but I'm against it because of the health hazard. The health hazard is there, and it has not helped anybody. Every person breathes fresh, uh, uh, fresh air, and every person is affected. So many children have died, so many old people have died because of the infect of this uh, uh, modular, um, the effect of this uh, both fire that we are hearing of. But let the government find it necessary to build modular refinery. Just as I said, it's not a skyrocket project. It can be done under 15, 16 months. And the, 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 the state will be free of uh, this uh, problem. And the, 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 the youth also will be free of this problem. All right. Um... Uh, con uh, uh, retired Colonel Rwanda, thank you so much for your opening comments there. But let's, uh, let's talk about um, the issue of nipping this in the bud. Because you stated that getting those refineries done could take months. And it's more like a long-term project. But in, in the interim, we need to ensure the health and safety of the people in river states, especially the affected communities where this suit is dealing with them in such a drastic manner. So we see that some of the arrests that have been made so far are with the foot soldiers. The owners of some of this, do I call them companies, illegal refining um, companies, have not been caught yet. And so it seems to me that they're just filling a water, uh, filling a basket with water. What's your take on that? How can these guys be nipping the ball? Because when you get the owner, like this is strike the shepherd and the sheep, sheep will, scat, will scatter. Uh, so what's your take on this particular um, issue? As you know, the go government of the day has alleged that some security agencies are involved. We had a situation whereby the NCSCDC and the police were almost uh, involved in uh, talking rifles among themselves. But this is what I see as very bad to the system. The government has to be careful with it. The government in the sense that they are, they are aware of those that are perpetuating this evil. They are aware of the uh, chiefs that are perpetuating this evil. They are aware of the uh, uh, the, the, the law enforcement agencies that are involved in this thing. What they can do is to either synergize with the federal government, get better set of people that will man this area, and see how you can move those officers that are involved and so on. So what but better synergy with the federal government should be the best because oil is in the exclusive list. It is something that has to be they have to synergize with the federal government to get the best out of it. They have tried in making sure that the the the, the present situation is has come down. There is no more much of suit. There is no much of this in bed. They should do more by synergizing with the federal government to see how this suit can be brought to an abrupt end. But I still say this is a state government that feels that they, they know it all. Modular refinery, which the federal government has given to states and individuals that can build, should be one of the best options. This use will still be employed. We have so many use that have passed out from 
uh, the, the, the amnesty uh, uh, project. They have been, they are professionals. They have been able to 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 to, to pass out either as uh, pipeline engineers or uh, corrosion engineers or even involved in making sure that these uh, uh, refineries uh, this thing, they, they, they break out they, they pass out through the this thing, um, uh, the through the this thing, the amnesty so they can bring them in and no, there's nothing wrong with bringing it. If the, 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 the modular refinery will benefit both the state government and the individuals, that is the youth. And so in today reverse state, I can boast that the youth are not employed. No person is employed. And this is a great danger to the system. In the next few days, I am warning this place may not be tenable for all of us. about what's happening in rivers across the entire Niger Delta where you've had um, oil um, happen. So now I'm not too sure whether th this um, 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 targeting of um, the illegal refineries will in the long term hold like you also share that same pessimism. Uh, you'd want something large scale in dealing with the problem. Help, help us understand also too, I, I know that um, what was done in the past, uh, especially with um, the, the, the vandalizing of pipelines by former President Goodluck Jonathan, was to get them involved by paying them monies to protect the pipelines. And in that way, uh, you had communities take ownership of, um, of the pipelines, and there was a reduction in the vandalizing of the pipelines. You think that sort of um, method in the short term can work in getting communities together, pay them some money, and maybe they can better protect the oil uh, facilities from vandalizing and then providing that supply to the people who unfortunately now go and use for coal fire. Let, let, let me tell you one thing. Once you engage the youths in a meaningful way, like this modular refinery issue, they will not I know my people, they will not be involved in most of this vandalism and so on, vandalization of pipelines and so on. But when you make it in form of scam, you bring in some few people, bring in some few uh, political cronies, political cohorts, and give them that right to protect the, the, the pipelines, it doesn't work. But bring out genuine employment opportunities for them to work and see how they can survive in the system. And that is where we are running into. Then opened up, the Songhai farms, Amechi, Amechi uh, opened up in, in, in this state, have been closed. The reasons, I don't know. Look at uh, flour mill, has been closed. What is the reason? I don't know. But we should put all this in holistically. See how the Songhai uh, farms can be reopened and run a sort of PPP, private-public partnership, where the youth can go there and train, and you pay them some little stipends so that they can go back and uh, 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 bring out themselves. I don't think any youth that is occupied with things doing, at the end of the month, his paid money, can go into, uh, 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 into uh, 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 corrupt, uh, uh, nefarious activity. So these are things we are advising the government to do, but they don't listen. They don't listen. But when this thing will blow up, all of us will be involved. We'll be involved because in the kind of state that we are, we have all the necessary what, 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 what of the, 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 the aircraft? They said they used over 3 million euros. 3 million e 3 billion euro, 3 million euro, I mean, to work. That aircraft would have been scrapped in, uh, in, in, in Germany and bring back the little money they have to add to this thing. I mean, some of these things are not skyrocket uh, projects. So I don't know if the government is hearing me, if he can listen and listen for once and do the best, do the holistic things we have mentioned and so on. Things will work out. That is it. 
much for that. Uh, still staying on the subject matter, which is the efforts so far done by uh, the River State Government to nip in the bud this issue of illegal refineries and the resultant effect of the suit that is causing so much health hazard in uh, in the communities uh, around there in River State. But let's 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 talk about um, one of the issues, one of the causes of the suit, which is the burning of um, you know some of these materials when they are found by the security agencies. Um, I want to you know ask if if there are any recommendations as to how else these illegal items can be disposed of so they don't become you know harmful to the society so rather than burning you know which will release some sort of harmful carbon dioxide into the air what uh what other recommendations do you have as regards you know disposing of such materials you know uh, this illegal refinery has brought a lot of hazards to the people of river state people of niger delta and it is my own opinion that the government can invest in modular refinery to get this thing sorted out. And they should ban this use, the, the flaring of gas. Flaring of gas is another point where these emissions come out and where people are affected. So the issue now is how do we work out this thing? River State can come up with building modular refinery. The federal government can ban most of these companies that have oil blocks from flaring oil. I think every, I have lived on this earth a bit, at least I'm 60 something now. I know that the federal government, that is what they call four year development plan, five year development plan. They said about 10, 15 years ago, they will stop gas flaring in River State. But it has not happened. Every year they keep postponing the doomsday. That is what we are saying. They should stop flaring gas. And these are the points. These are the major problems. Like the River State government has been able to be fair to them to stop this uh, uh, burning of uh, uh, cows at the abattoir with tires. And they have a task force on ground that is going about seizing tires and they are converting the tire to a different thing, which is good. But the situation we are facing is very, very gruesome. It's very, very bad. It is something that must stop. If not stopped, reduced drastically. And the only way to do it is either to build a modular refinery that the government can gain, employment of uh, youths and so on, then burning of flaring of gas and burning of the, the tires and so on. So you find out that most of the oil companies in, in, in the state here, in the hinterlands, do the burning of flaring of gas and burning of this, 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 this. Look at, the, 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 we have a case here huh, in Dorama and we have another case, the refinery. Because the refinery is not working, I don't know. So this problem must stop. If they want to stop it, they must stop it. So, uh, retired Colonel Tinedo Oda, many things for us to think about. Lean forward, uh, not just for the people in River State, but entire Niger Delta, to think again. If you have a city 19 times higher than what the World Health Organization has recommended, the air quality in River State, you need to ask yourself again whether you want to live long or die early, because it's directly linked the quality of air. Uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a community to the life expectancy and the health challenges we're facing. So we're going to keep our eyes on that air quality index, for, for especially for Port Harcourt, and see if it reduces. Then that way we can say if um, the, the state government's uh, task force is making any gains. And a uh, great discussion, too, with uh, Colonel Woda around the uh, artisanal refineries. And very importantly, the two refineries in Port Harcourt need to come on stream because it will provide thousands of jobs for people and will perhaps uh, banish this whole talk before we transit into cleaner, renewable energy. But always a pleasure speaking with you, sir. Uh, retired Colonel Tinedo Woda. Thank you. Um, Excellent. All right. We'll go on a quick break. We come back. We'll talk about politics and um, the issue of uh, carpet crossing politicians from one party to the other party. Uh, what gain is it of what, or, or rather what nuisance value is it to us as citizens? We stay with us on News Up.